Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Build Value by Choice. I'm your host, Nana Bonsu, President and CEO of Infinite Horizons Incorporated. We help business owners with their financial performance and quality of life goals so that they can explore all their options when it comes to transitioning out of their business. As part of our one-year anniversary, we are giving away free gifts. So don't forget to send us a screenshot of your subscription and your review to info info at infhorizons.com. All right, so now on to today's guest. Our guest today is Stacy Randall Brown. Stacy is a member of the Business Filler Club, a contrarian on how to generate referrals and a supporter of the entrepreneurial dream. Through her program, she provides a roadmap to take control of your business. Stacy is a three-time entrepreneur, author of the award-winning book, Generating Business Referrals Without Asking, and host of the Roadmap to Grow Your Business podcast. Stacy has taught her no ask no asking referral generation strategy to hundreds and hundreds of clients and audiences. Her clients include well-known corporations and franchises, but her focus is on small business owners and solopreneurs. Stacy received a master's in organizational communication and is married with, is married with three kids. Welcome to Build by the Way Choice, Stacy. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Wonderful. We are excited to have you. Our topic today is to grow your is how to grow your business without referrals, without even asking. How does the no asking referral generation strategy actually work? Yeah, you know, for decades, people have always taught if you are going to get referrals, you're going to have to ask for them or compensate for them or be like gimmicky and promotional, like putting in your email signature or the greatest compliment you can give me as a referral. Those were the trigger points that were typically taught and are still taught and have been taught for not just decades and decades, but probably generations. And they were very much focused on, okay, if you want a referral, you it's about you and you have to go make it happen. And so the trigger, right, the tactic that was taught was, well, then ask for them or offer to pay for them or put the email signature or be, you know, gimmicky and promotional and then just network to know a ton of people. And that's been the standard advice that's been given for decades. But when you really actually kind of like look at the science behind why referrals happen in the first place, you realize why those tactics for most people never work. For others, occasionally sometimes work and then they stop working. And for most people, they're super awkward and uncomfortable and not what they want to do. Like they don't want to be asking or trying to be like, hey, I'll give you 10% if you send me a client, right? Like that's not how people want to present their business. And so for most people, it's just been like, hey, you got these old school kind of tactics, these triggers that you've been taught. But when you really look at the science behind them, you realize actually there's a lot of stuff happening inside the mind of the referral source, the person who's going to refer you. And you have to understand that and you have to be authentic and really make sure that you're about protecting that relationship when you're trying to get referrals. And so we look at it from the perspective, okay, let's like let's reverse engineer what's happening when a referral is being given to you, right? And then let's also make sure we're paying attention to not just like the brain science, like what's actually happening in our heads, but the psychology of it and the behavioral economics of it and looking at all those science pieces to say, okay, so what's actually going on? And then we created, right, a strategy based on the science. And I will tell you, it's not like I looked at it and was like, look at all the science that's happening, right, when a referral is being given. But I've been doing this almost 10 years now. And over time, we've, I've just gotten better and better at being able to be like, oh, this is consistently happening. This is the same pattern that's happening. And so what when we like when I really dug in to understand how and why referrals are happening, it was really clear that there's a science piece to this, that all the other strategies ignore. They just focus on you taking some action, like asking or offering to pay, when in reality, referrals aren't about you. They're about the referral source helping somebody else. And you need to understand that dynamic and the science behind it and the psychology behind it and build a strategy and a system that honors it and respects it while also still getting results. So what 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 was the epiphany moment? What led you on this path to actually um, going contrarian as far as uh, you know, asking for referrals is concerned? Yeah, so I had a first business. It was an HR human resource consulting firm, and it did not quite make it to the five-year mark. It lasted just over four years before it actually failed, and I had to go back to corporate America, which is really hard to do if you've tasted entrepreneurial freedom to then go back in, you know, being an employee and having a boss. 
And so for me, I looked back during the time of being in corporate America, I was kind of like overcoming the ego blow that you take when you're, you have a business that fails. And I was like, what was I doing wrong? Like I'm, I did great work. My clients loved me, but why wasn't I able to sustain it? And there was a number of things that I learned that are like my business failure lessons. But one of the big one was, is that consistent business development that you're doing on a consistent basis. And not only does, do you need to enjoy it, right? It also has to work. And one of the things that I realized that my first business, my consulting firm never really did was get referrals. And I was like, but wait, that's the best way to grow. That's the easiest way to grow. Why wasn't I getting any referrals if my clients loved me, right? Because there's a, there's a mentality out there in the business community that is if you do amazing work, you will get referrals. That is not true. You cannot build it and they will come. You actually have to nurture those relationships. I'm not saying you can't get a couple or sporadically or get some, but you won't have consistent volume of referrals every year based on the hope strategy. And so for me, I was like, wait, why am I not getting referrals? So like everybody else, I went to, to go like, okay, so what do people say about how you get referrals? And that's when I learned that same type of information that everybody else knew that, hey, if you want referrals, you got to ask or compensate or network all the time, right? And I'm like, I can't network all the time. I have three children, right? Like, there I have a life. And then there's also, you know, be gimmicky and promotional, which is not the brand reputation that I want. And so I looked at that advice and I was like, there has got to be a better way. So when I started my second business, which is the business I have now, and I've been doing this for almost 10 years, when I started this business, I was like, okay, I need to be successful because I can't have another business failure. I'm going to figure this referral thing out. I'm just going to do the opposite and different, do different things than what I see people doing. And I just took a really good notes as to what I was doing and when it would produce results for me so that I could figure out what I was doing. Because I do like to reverse engineer things. But in the beginning, that first year, I was just throwing spaghetti on the wall. I was like, what sticks? What's working? And I got 112 referrals in my first year in business. And I didn't ask for them. And this is when I, my second business started out, I was a productivity and business coach. It's obviously changed now and I just teach my referral strategy. But in the beginning that I was like, I just need clients. So I'm going to try anything and everything to see if I can get referrals. And I got 112 without asking. And I said, okay, I'm on to something here. And my client said the same thing. And they were like, teach us your referral strategy. And that's what forced me to realize, oh, there's a system, there's a strategy, like there's a strategy for when you have existing referral sources versus when you're trying to create new referral sources. Like, and that's when I started getting into all the different pieces that make up an overall like referral strategy is the individual plans or strategies within that. Um, and, it, you know, I did it like one by one, like most people, and um, my clients started having success. And that for me was like, okay, this is based on science and it's having, now it's not just my success, it's their success. And then I shifted the whole business in that direction. Okay. So two things I got out of it is number one, you know, dare to think different, you know, like Steve Jobs says, <laughs> and, and don't be afraid to pivot. Like uh, Jeff Bezos and other entrepreneurs always say that uh, sometimes yeah. where you start, is not where you finish. The market can dictate, um, you know, so it looks like you pivoted. So that's great. Um, yeah. But the market was like, hey, teach us referrals. And I was like, it's way more fun than teaching you how to control your inbox. So sure. <laughs> so I pivoted. Yeah. So who is this strategy best for? Yeah. So here's the thing. Every business is capable of receiving referrals. And there are lots of strategies out there depending on the industry that you're in. My strategy, the way that I teach it and the, and the who I work with and who I see get the best results are typically professional services firms. Um, not always, but typically they're professional services firms. So I do a lot of work with attorneys or CPAs, financial advisors, real estate agents, interior designers. Um, I do a lot with like travel planners or consultants, business coaches, uh, marketing consultants. It's those that build relationships with what they do. My methodology and my strategies work the best with where I don't work, but that doesn't mean referrals can't work in these industries, but where my methodology won't really fit is in the retail space or in the medical space. So I do, I do have some like, you know, coaches that are like on the health space that works because they're coaches, but I don't do like dentist office or doctor's offices. So I don't do medical. I don't do retail and I don't do hospitality and I don't do online course creators as well, because that's just a different model. Um, but I am more, more, my methodology and what I teach and how I teach it, where I see the greatest success are those and those, hey, when someone decides to hire you, it's no small investment, right? It's no small investment to hire you. And at the end of the day, there's a lot of trust built up with that as well. Right. And why, why do you think it's more effective to generate referrals without asking? 
Well, so first of all, I think it works. So it's definitely more effective because it's going to work. Second of all, you're going to feel better about doing it. And that is actually the point, right? You, anyone can go ask. I mean, I could right now ask you to refer me to somebody, but I'm going to feel really weird and awkward and uncomfortable. And I'm probably going to make you awkward and uncomfortable because you didn't see the question coming. And you may like, I don't know if I want to refer you, Stacey, like, and I don't know who to refer you. It's a very awkward, off-putting question, right? And so anybody can do any of those other strategies. It, my strategy is for the person who doesn't want to ask or compensate or network a ton or have to be gimmicky and promotional. This is a different strategy. Um, and so from that perspective, right, it's it fits your personality. It fits your character. It fits how you want to show up in the marketplace and how you want to be known as someone who develops relationships. And that's where your referrals come from. So that's who I work best with. So have you ever heard that terminology in sales that there are hunters and there are gatherers, right? Mm -hmm. There's people in sales and they're hunters and they go out and they're like always be closing, right? And they're constantly on the hunt. They go to a networking event. They put their card into like 15 people's hands and they're always on the hunt. And then there's another type of people who do sales called gatherers. My strategy works really well for the gatherers. So if you are in sales or you're a business owner responsible for sales, which is a lot of who I work with, then obviously you want a strategy that's going to fit your gatherer mentality. And that's what this is for, because I'm not asking you to do anything that's going to make it awkward or uncomfortable or make your referral sources awkward and uncomfortable. And that's why it works. So you say introverts can also win in this game. Totally. Actually, the the second person I taught this strategy to was a com like the complete opposite of me. <laughs> so as you can imagine, I'm like a total extrovert. And when I had all that success, I was like, oh my gosh, is it based on my personality? Is it based on my energy level? Is it based on me being an extrovert? Is it based on me, the fact that I'm a business and productivity coach? The second person I taught it to was an introverted attorney that did personal injury work. So like completely opposite of me. And she has continued. She's eight years into it now and continues to have amazing success. Wonderful. What are some of the challenges businesses face when they implement this strategy? Yeah. So number one, it's your mindset. Because whereas everybody hears you say, oh, we're going to talk to Stacy about referrals without asking. And they're like, yes, that would be amazing. But what I know is, is that you have pretty much probably had it beaten into your head that you have to ask to get referrals. So it's really being willing to let go of that mentality that, wait, I can actually take care of my referral sources in a different way, use a different type of language and be consistent with that and generate referrals. So there's a little bit of that. It's so foreign, right? It's so different from what I've been told for so long. Will it work? So the first thing is the mindset to get people over that. And then the second thing is the big difference between people who are successful when they're implementing my process and not it's two things. Number one, it's consistency. If you're consistent, and when I say consistent, I don't teach you to do something daily, weekly, or even monthly. Like that is like the, what makes my system really special. Um, and so it's not like I'm asking you to be consistent every day, every week, every month, but when it's time to do something, you have to be consistent with your actions. And then the second thing is, is, you actually have to care about your referral sources. They can't be just a number to you. You have to view them as the most important people to your business next to your clients are the people who bring new clients to you. And you would be surprised how many people in theory believe that, but in action don't actually show up and take care of their referral sources. If you're looking for the easy button, this isn't it. Is it easy? Yes, but there's still work involved. Right. Um what advice would you give business owners who are looking to um, go through referrals without asking? Number one thing people have to do is know who their referral sources are. It's what I call the starting point for every business owner who's like, okay, I think I want to really take control of my referrals or at least understand what's happening with referrals in my business. The starting point for everybody, whether they work with me or not, the starting point for everybody is to identify their referral sources. And that means you need to sit down and actually figure out where are your clients and your prospects coming from? Did they come to a Facebook ad? Did they come from a networking event? Or were they referred to you by Sam, right? Like you need to go through and identify the sources of your clients and your prospects and go back a couple of years. And then the people who referred clients or prospects, because not every prospect becomes a client, that the people who referred those clients and prospects to you, those are your referral sources and you need to identify them by name because what's going to happen is, is you'll decide, wow, look at all these people who send me clients that I've been ignoring for the last six months, right? right. You'll have that moment of, oh my gosh, these are people that if I took better care of, 
And it's not just the care, but it's also the language we use and the consistency of it. But if I took better care of these people, I could probably get more referrals from them. And then sometimes you'll look at that list and be like, I have three people on my list. I actually don't even have really that many referral sources. I need more. And that always dictates where we're going to start and what direction we're going to go. And that's really important for people to understand is the first thing you do is, do you have referral sources? What are their names? And not what you think you can remember, but what your data and your business reveals. And then if you have referral sources, we usually say it's like, you know, more than five or six, um, then you're ready to start nurturing them to get more referrals from them. And if you have less than four or five, then we typically tell folks, hey, actually, you need to start with a different strategy and cultivate new referral sources. Um, and But that's always a starting point. It's like, do you have referral sources and how many and how long has it been since they've referred you? That gives you great insight into the direction to take. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate the insights that you've shared with us. How do people get in contact with you or follow your work? Yeah, so the home base, great place, is always the website, stacybrownrandall.com. And Stacy is spelled with an E. I know that gets people from time to time, but stacybrownrandall.com. It's going to have information on my podcast, as you mentioned, the book. Um, and then we have a lot of freebies. If you just go to the freebie link, which is stacybrownrandall.com forward slash freebie, um, it's also on the homepage. You just click on the freebie button. It'll take you to a page where it'll ask you, have you been in business less than two years or have you been in business more than two years? And then there's specific resources for you based on how long you've been in business. And that's a great place to start just to be like, okay, let me take this referral ninja quiz and figure out how good I am at generating referrals. And then let me figure out who my referral sources are. There's just, it'll walk you through an exercise of how to do that. Um, but that's a great place to get started. Wonderful. And we're going to have that information in the show notes as well. Just you know where people can go back and refer to it. Well, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time, Stacy. And um, for everybody else, just don't forget to comment on Facebook and let us know what you think. Until next week, bye for now.